Solving and Interpreting Solutions, Two-Step Inequalities, Lesson 7.3b. We can apply what we know about solving two-step equations and one-step inequalities to solving two-step inequalities. We can graph the solution on a number line using an open circle to show that the number is not included as an answer. We use a closed circle to show that it is included as an answer. So remember that this is the coefficient of the variable. Our variable is x. We have our constant. It's a minus 4. We have our inequality symbol, which is less than, and we have a 12. It says, if we multiply 5 by an unknown number, then subtract 4 from the product, it will be less than 12. Sam wants to complete the first two miles of an eight-mile run in 15 minutes or less, running at a steady pace. The inequality 8 minus 25 hundredths p is less than or equal to 6 can be used to find p, the pace, in miles per hour. He can run to reach his goal. It's telling us to solve the inequality, then graph and interpret the solution. So the 8 is 8 miles in all. The minus 0 0.25 for right here, 15 minutes is 1 fourth of an hour, and we write 1 fourth as 25 hundredths. See? This became 25 hundredths of an hour. The P is the pace as miles per hour. We have less than or equal to because he wants to run less than or equal to 15 minutes of time and 6 is the remaining miles to run after he runs 2 miles. If it's an 8 mile run and he's going to complete the first 2 miles, well then there's just 6 miles left. We use inverse operations to solve the inequality. So remember, to solve, we need to isolate the variable to one side of the inequality. First thing we do, because we see that this is the coefficient of p, we leave this alone for now, and we look at 8, which is the constant. Now the constant is over here instead of in the middle. Okay, So we subtract 8 from both sides of the inequality. That's going to create a 0 pair here, plus 8 minus 8 makes 0. On this side, if we have a positive 6 and we take 8 away, we're going to have a negative 2. Now, we have negative 25 hundredths p is less than or equal to negative 2. Now, because this is the coefficient of our variable p, we have a negative 25 hundredths. We divide both sides. We have the same numerator and denominator, so this is the same thing as saying we have 1p. And negative 2 divided by negative 25 hundredths is 8. We can fit 8 of these 25 hundredths into a 2. They have negatives, and a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we have p is greater than or equal to 8 because we reverse the sign because the coefficient of p, the negative 25 hundredths is a negative. So remember, this was a positive. Well, that was our constant. Our coefficient of p is a negative. We have a minus 25 hundredths here. We know p is isolated on the left side, and p is greater than or equal to 8. So now we know that p is greater than or equal to 8 because we had to reverse the sign because that was a negative coefficient of the variable. We can graph it, including 8, because it's greater than or equal to 8. We draw a solid circle, a closed circle, on the 8, and we shade in greater than 8, because this shaded in area represents p, that it's greater than or equal to 8. That tells us that Sam must run a steady pace of 8 miles per hour to reach his goal. That's pretty fast. The fastest humans running can do 5 to 8 miles per hour, so that's on the high end. 
And anyone looking at our graph will know that 8 is a solution because we used the closed circle. Here we have another inequality. 8x minus 13 is less than or equal to 3. We see this says minus 13. So we add 13 to each side to eliminate this minus 13. We create zero pair here. We have a minus 13 plus 13, so that's eliminated as a zero. We add 13 to this side, we get 16. Now we know that 8x is less than or equal to 16. We divide both sides by the coefficient 8. We have the same numerator and denominator, so that makes a 1. That means we have 1x is less than or equal to 2, because 16 divided by 8 is 2. And we can graph this. x is less than or equal to 2. Since it's or equal, we're going to do the filled in circle, the closed circle, and we're going to shade everything less than that because it's less than or equal to 2. Anyone looking at our graph will know 2 is a solution because we used the closed circle. Here we have another inequality. Negative 4a plus 50 is greater than 26. Because we have a plus 50 here, we're going to minus 50 on each side. That's going to create a zero pair here. We have plus 50 minus 50, and we eliminate it. On this side, we have 26 plus a negative 50. Well, that's going to give us a negative 24. Now we have negative 4a is greater than negative 24. We have a negative 4 for our coefficient, so we divide both sides by negative 4. And we have the same numerator and denominator, so we get a 1a, but we don't have to write the 1, do we? On this side, we have a negative divided by a negative, so negative 24 divided by negative 4 is a positive 6. We know that a, and we reverse the sign because we divided by a negative, this is a negative coefficient, we know a is less than 6. Since it's less than 6 and it's not equal to 6, we use an open circle to show it is not included as a solution. We shade all the other values that are less than 6. And anyone looking at our number line will be able to tell that 6 is not a solution because it's not included. We have an open circle. For this inequality, the solution for a, a's value, can be any one of these numbers less than 6. We can check our solution by substituting a value from the shaded portion of our number line into the original inequality. This was our original inequality right here, and we said anything that was less than 6 could be a solution, but it can't be 6. Let's choose 5. We have a negative 4 times a positive 5. That gives us a negative 20. When we subtract 50, remember, we're subtracting a positive 50, so it's the same thing as adding the opposite. We could say we're adding a negative 50. That's going to give us a negative 70. We reverse the sign because of this negative 4, and we get negative 70 is less than a positive 26, and that's true. So 5 could be a solution for A. Okay, we finished this second part. We're going to move on to the last part of 7.3, and we're going to be determining if a given value makes an inequality true. I really hope this is all making sense to you. And really remember, when we have a negative coefficient, we have to reverse the sign. Otherwise, it won't be true. Have a great day. I hope the rest of your day is wonderful. And join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.